what is going on welcome back to financial journey so i got the myth the man the legend or whatever the hell that saying is saudi bay if you guys aren't on twitter or x pop over there immediately go give him a follow he is one of the best information for evs everything out there so saudi bay appreciate you joining me thank you for the invitation it's always a pleasure to be with you you are always welcome uh, so I feel like there's a lot to talk on and a lot to speculate based off of. Um, so yeah, this is kind of just a casual conversation. So what do you think about the recent action with Lucid? What what do you exactly what exactly do you mean? Like uh... I guess the price action. And I guess just everything like Peter doing podcasts, summits, conferences, interviews, like five in like what do you think about Lucid? just doing everything all at once just uh to be honest uh it's of course it's it looks it sounds uh you know it looks very great seeing lucid you know climbing all those prices peter the changing the perspective of what's happening with uh you know lucid for the past at least few years maybe um uh, i actually i have some you know some fears with this like go, we, we we went like 70 percent up in the stock price although suddenly and that raises a lot of uh, question if this is actually a healthy climb or is not but of course uh i don't want to object about that <laughs> i'll just <laughs> wait <laughs> but i i will not go through and uh, for myself and this is not a financial advice of course but i will not just buy back and try to average down at this stage it's not it's too early because it's the whole market is up even the russell's 2000 companies they are all up so it's been i think it's just going with the flow nothing special because of lucid yet yeah so uh, that's about the price but uh with peter he's been i guess uh, a bit vocal addressing and uh, addressing a lot of concerns especially with his uh you know with his shares <laughs> yeah i think though but it's yeah it's it's fine also it's good that he's addressing that do you he's think that's a sign of uh their earnings that it's going to be good or of course that's yeah. a definite that's going to happen something positive is coming but but i have one fear i don't want to spread a lot of fud about it but there is like one fear. The I think they might. There is a chance that they say we will adjust our production uh, forecast, lowering actually. Lowering, lowering. Oh, okay. Maybe it's it's there. It's there somewhere. But I don't know. So we'll see. If they do not change that, if they do not change it, I think it will be a positive year overall. I like to hear all viewpoints. So where was he? Did he say something? That... No, no, but I was just crunching some numbers myself, looking yeah. into uh, looking into their production and their uh, their deliveries. And this year seems to be it's like different. It's not uh, it's not like similar to any other year before. They are delivering more and producing let, uh, less than the delivery, which is good uh, from a financial stand. But what happens after we sell those units? yeah so that's i don't think that'll be like they have you might know the number better than me but i think they're sitting on at least like six thousand in inventory aren't they that's unsold so they could probably last up until the tail end of 2025 i know um sultan did recently Faisal did a recent interview and he seemed very happy about their numbers and said that investors will be very happy he said that you couldn't say anything but I took that as that they're going to far exceed their expectations, but yeah, it could oh, be. I'm not about that. I am long-term investor, so I look into the future. So since back in November, I've changed my stand with Lucid. Like, okay, it doesn't look very good from a long-term perspective. And we are definitely going into some sort of a recession. So what happens then? To the overall market not lucid specifically but to everything so and i am a long investor so i'll be counting years not months or weeks so i want to be in the right side 
make money as well. So <laughs> definitely yeah. believe in the product and the company, but uh, yeah, I have to take care of myself in the long run. Of course. Yeah, I think their product is very good. One thing that I did not like, and I think just people are just pinning Lucid down and asking them this, but every single interview that they, he's done over the last little bit has asked about dilution. And Peter, he doesn't answer it the best. He always just says that, yes, we're in a kind of in that sector, a startup company that's going to need a lot of capital. So I feel like that isn't a good thing. Um, I, I feel like that's, a, no, it's... It's sort uh, of normal. If you don't expect them need financials at the at the way they are burning cash and they're ambitious of expansion in term of manufacturing then uh, you just uh, you know you are living in a bubble <laughs> you just uh, you know lying to yourself uh, you know in general but yeah. i think this 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 is also something that i've been looking into myself see what possible uh, financial support or sources of uh, basically uh, injecting cash into the into the business themselves. So um, I don't think the PI. Uh, well, I have a theory that I don't think the PIF themselves will be directly injecting money in, in the future. So they are being they are used to at least uh, once they inject one billion dollar for the past at least two years now, and this year might be different. So they already did this year. Maybe next year they will do something different. It depends on the economy of the world and the financial of the PIF. Just it's been some changes with the way they are handling business. Let's do, let's say that at, at least what I noticed. Well, there was that one article. I, I didn't see it wasn't official news, but I saw that one article that said that the PIF said or mentioned that they were not going to inject any more money in Lucid. Um, I don't know if that was how that could be verified, but I don't know. Um, there there have been some changes. Uh, well, logically, I think with that new preferred share um, that was just announced, I think that is going to be, I, I think last time we spoke, I, I mentioned that is going to be their poison pill. If they ever want to take Lucid Private, that is going to be that point that kind of puts them there. Um. But anyways, yeah. I, I guess enough about the negativity. <laughs> about this up, upcoming earnings, like what do, do you think there's going to be a surprise, a positive surprise? So my, 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 oh, the positive surprise. So Hyundai is in the pipeline, definitely. They might say that we are progressing in that and conf reconfirming again that we are being reached by other manufacturers or other, you know, uh, interesting part, interesting parties out there uh will they do it soon hopefully and i think it's the best way to do it is in october where the uh the future investment fund uh, managed by the pif where they all the those investors meet in uh, in uh, the capital city riyadh in saudi arabia and uh will make business and make deals <laughs> yeah so it's time so they have time but until that point if nothing comes I think it will be something in 2025. Do you think they're going to open up reservations of the gravity? Because now the trademark, that whole deal is kind of behind us? Yeah, definitely. If they can uh, deliver this year. That's one but... thing. What was that latest one? Um, that latest interview came out Monday, I think it was. Mm -hmm. I didn't like when the guy's like, so is it going to come out? Do we like have your word that it's going to come out in like this year? He's like, to the best of my ability. I was like, oh. Like every, on, every, every interview, they are asking almost the same question. And uh, they are saying yeah. like, late, late 24. So there, there is a history with the Lucid. They always uh, not very accurate with their uh, timing. So it might take so take a while. So like with the, uh, so with the sale, with the showroom in UAE, they already delayed it for almost uh, one quarter, like full quarter or more. So they, they like to take their time, but they deliver. They deliver at the end. That's something they are good at, at least. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think when it comes down to Lucid, so for you've been very accurate on your predictions in the past. So when it came down to the Q2 numbers, how did that line up with your predictions? Oh, 
Are they so 21, 2100 oh, uh, delivered yeah, yeah. and, uh, or no, 2300 delivered, 2100 produced. Maybe I wasn't very, uh, with the Q2. Q2, I never expected exactly what they're going to do. But I thought they will be, there will be some hiccup in the delivery because they told us during the Q1 that, especially in Saudi Arabia, although it's not a big portion of their sales, that we will be experiencing some uh, shortage with deliveries or sales in Saudi Arabia or the region of uh, in the Gulf countries. For the Q2 and Q3, so far it's been good. Hopefully those positive deliveries are reflected because there are increase in sales in the US and Europe, hopefully. So uh, that will be also positive from uh, my own perspective. Because Saudi think... Arabia is a guaranteed market sort of for them. Yeah. Have you had any stats that has come out from that area, the region, like Saudi Arabia or anything to show EV demand? I, I know in the States... Europe, China has all that, but I've never had any stats coming from Saudi Arabia. Not Saudi Arabia, but I, there there was something I posted uh, maybe a couple of weeks back about rental contracts, like daily rental, basically the cars you pick up from the airport for business or during your travels. So it seems oh, that... Oh, yeah. The number so of rentals, yeah. It's not, it's not something that is significant or even maybe related to sales, but it shows that they are basically number one EV rentals in Saudi. So that is good. They are exceeding Tesla, <laughs> but that's unfair competition, maybe. There's one thing that I was actually going to ask you. Um, so Peter, uh, I think he, he mentioned it during the last interview, but I think they put out news about them lowering the battery pack size and kind of increasing the efficiency. And they did that not... and I guess the interviewer asked like, oh, so you cut costs on the pure lower cut the prices and stuff. And Peter just said, no, we became more efficient on producing the vehicle. So in your mind, uh, I, I was wanting to pick your brain. Does that mean the margins maintain the same? They just were able to be more efficient, but that's why they cut costs. So they kept the margins the same. Is that how you interpreted that at all? Am I saying it weird? Yeah, I don't know. I, I think um, I've been also thinking about the same point where they are, they are, they are basically offering lower, lower, lower priced vehicle to consumers, and they are improving the efficiency from a battery point of view, consumption wise. How does that reflect on the margin? Does that affect their margin? I think yes, in some way. Logically, yeah. I mean, talk, talking about production, right? If you are producing the same, almost the same numbers from past year, and you are significantly reduce the cost of your vehicle, then uh, either you are getting better supply deals, like lower cost material, and becoming more efficient in that, or you are, you know, just bearing the costs or the losses of those cheaper models. Uh, you know, and also in uh, in uh, f financial world, they they love to depreciate stuff, so it might <laughs> so they might reduce the cost of uh, production, or uh, you know, they have old machines, they already consume the value of it, uh, in their you know financial uh, uh, papers. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, so yeah, what's when it comes down to Lucid, so. As a company, do you think that they are going to grow in, in the future and continue to innovate, not counting your mentality about a broad market recession? Do you think that the fundamental business is going to continue to grow? You mean like it's a healthy business? Yeah. <laughs> is it though? I don't know. What do you think? Well, I think in the States with... The, possible back-to-back -back rate cuts that's going to be really good that should at least deter any recession probably up until probably 2025 at least i think um the only problem with lucid based on everything that peter's kind of talked on that mid-size suv is going to be that pivot for them to obtain profitability and so that will be probably tail end of 2027 if not early 2028 um 
because it, they won't obtain profitability like that. So the question is, can they survive up until that stage without having a recession? Because a recession, I agree with you, would completely obliterate a lot of companies that are living off of dilution. So I don't know. It's a, it's kind of a tough question to ask. I, I think that they are growing um, and they're moving finally in the right direction. They should have probably done started this like early back in 2022 to actually progress a lot better than what they have been. But I guess it comes down to the stance that will the PIF support Lucid? And because that's one thing that has really set, for instance, like Polestar and Lucid apart is the backing. And I think no matter what, even the biggest Tesla bulls always say, well, you know what? Lucid will be okay because they have the PIF. Their business sucks, but they have the PIF. So I think it will come down to, will the PIF continue to support Lucid? I think. Okay, so I have I have maybe, I'll give you the local perspective, my, my perspective of the situation. So the way I look at it in terms of what it's about, so maybe I can suggest also something here. Let's look at what's the PIF going to do with Seer Company. Let's not look at Lucid because now Seer is a, a local national company, right? So they will get most of the support needed, like the financials, even locally here, they will be supported equally or more than Lucid, right? Makes uh, sense. So, yeah. So my only question, will this affect the amount of support that Lucid get because they, they are uh, first in the market, okay? And that's an advantage always for any company. But now you have Seer and Seer will need a lot of, you know, uh, cash to raise the company, especially they are producing mass, you know, uh, mid-size units and they will be able to really sell faster and more than Lucid. So they will be generating more cash or returns to the economy faster, at least. So that's the question. That's the thing that I think we should wait and see what, what's going to happen so we can decide what's going to happen to Lucid in terms of financial support in the future. That's actually, yeah, that's a good point. Because, yeah, there could be, well, not to get political, but let's say Trump does come into power or mm. uh, gets prof uh, presidency, they they typically like to kind of have the protectism or whatever that wording is. Um, they like to have American only. And usually that doesn't really benefit external parties. So maybe this is where, as far as I, I'm aware, Saudi Arabia and Trump have had pretty good rapport, but anything is possible. So yeah, it does make sense that their priorities would be focusing a little bit more on SEER. Um, I also do think that the Volkswagen Rivian kind of joint partnership did signal a bottoming in the market. And I feel still in the coming years, a lot of companies that are just completely failing, not operationally, but just financially, such as Polestar, they're going to be looking for um, acquisitions. So I think maybe Lucid could be part of that. Um, yeah. I don't, it, it could be extreme. There's a same thing as what happened in the cannabis sector. I feel like even though they're not really related, the cannabis sector was kind of like the early stages of EVs. There was a lot of them. A lot of them failed. A lot of them just excessively diluted and just dwindled out. And then there was a transition point where a lot of companies started to kind of just merge and get acquired. So I feel like assuming the rate cuts come and we start to enter into a expansionary stage of the market, that might be a good time for acquisitions, which Lucid has the tech. Like I think they've proven themselves quite a lot that they have good tech. Indeed. I guess, well, no matter what, it also depends on the PIF. What's their interest? Because they have a controlling interest, right? And if someone wants to merge with Lucid and PIF says no, it's like, well, tough luck. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They, they, I, I, 
they have a long term plan also so they are they are in a you know they understand each other i would say like you know like a family basically right we you you take care of the kids i'll work or we work and we take care of the kids so it's the same situation i think but uh priorities change that's what i'm saying and if there is a recession coming if there is a recession right and it affects like oil prices or you know where the money flows in into the kingdom as well from or globally so it might affect the you know how much we give how much we how how what's the prioritization will be it will be it's also it's an opportunity to grow during this downtime it's all um, i don't think they will acquire it maybe maybe after 2030 but acquisition will not happen uh, in my opinion and i'm not an expert but that's that's my... just the pif taking lucid private well do you think same mentality so if you have two kids would you want to merge them would you ever see seer and lucid partnering merging Maybe. because under two seer they have foxconn enough. right <laughs> i want five kids it's well, <laughs> so two kids is not enough uh, that's what i'm saying <laughs> that's that's company, right so they they are still few you know they are not comparing comparing to china and to the u.s market is nothing like yeah. you have a lot if you are planning to establish an you know a house or a family with many you know being very productive family here <laughs> you, are, you have to you have to have a lot of kids uh right so still there there, there is a bigger plan here in the play so uh which we'll see it's it's all connected with the saudi vision 2030 so we'll see what's going on and they are a strategical partner in this they all as as peter been emphasizing a lot so they are aligned on what is their role in this and what, like the PIF, what is their role or what they need and uh, Lucid, what they need to do to to satisfy this uh, relation, right? So that's what I'm saying and P Peter been saying and I think every investor almost know this as a fact. So, uh, so far, maybe in numbers, Lucid is not delivering that what, what, what investors are hoping for. But I think what, what from PIF or Saudi Arabia standpoint, they appreciate the delivery of manufacturing process, you know, starting production, um, developing the market from regulatory point of view, sharing knowledge and expertise, training locals, and you know, this kind of uh, relation is healthy so far. Have you heard anything? I know in 2023, it was a common thing. Some people, I, I don't think I actually understood it, but do you think Lucid is going to get listed on the Saudi stock exchange? Because for liquidity hope, purposes, that would be good. Hoping for that. <laughs> you are but hoping for it? Now something happened like, uh, I think this week, uh, they have an ETF for in the Shanghai market for Saudi companies. So basically Chinese companies or people can actually invest in Saudi Arabia through this ATF. And that's a good thing. Uh, so they are, the, so all because there were statements in the past, they want companies to be listed, do listing in the Saudi or US market or European market. Now they changed the approach to ATFs. Maybe it didn't work out from regulatory point of view or I'm not sure what happened, but it's good so far. So, but they are, but investments for the past six months been turning toward east. Yeah, if we talk sense. about the uh, PIF, right? They've been turning yeah. about to east. They will, they might go west again if Trump comes. We don't know. <laughs> yep. Yeah. No, it's. I think this uh, presidential debate or this uh, vote will be very important for so many different sectors um i think it'll help increase like trade but at the same time trump t seems to be very much pro oil not ev so i don't know if that would work but uh yeah i don't know so any other final things that you wanted to really bring up that uh you're kind of working on secret little plans anything that you know let me see 
So yeah, maybe I can just repeat what I've been posting about because I think the people are uh, not paying attention to it as much as needed to be is the uh, what Lucid is doing regarding sales in Europe and and what what supply chain agreement they are making to reduce the cost of their material. That's an important thing if you are producing mass in 2026 and even for the gravity. We don't know much about it, actually, but if they can uh, show that they can acquire cheaper material with the amount of production they are doing, it will be very positive. They are, they are starting to gain that confidence in their supply chain circle, where we, as investors, we expect when they have a plan, they deliver. Because it was a problem before. So will it happen again with the gravity, since they are creating something from scratch, as they said? So everything is new. They are not sharing the same platform from the air. They are doing something new. Will it be a problem? So that's why I am very uh, cautious about Q2 and Q3. Are they going to reduce production forecast? And I have like- That's interesting, yeah. I, I have a point, I think, here. <laughs> Maybe people will buy in, in this idea. But it's, it's uh, you know, I am very cautious about it. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I guess I didn't understand your viewpoint on the gravity and why that would really affect production. But yeah, no, I, I, I could so see that. Like, you know, you are, you are in between high high volume production and low volume production. So are uh, so it's now it's a it's a time to prove yourself that we have no problem with mass production. We are in control of our suppliers. We know what we are doing. We are efficient. They've been repeating those, these words. And when you are in manufacturing and you say efficient, efficient, then it's understandably that you are moving goods and materials around easily without affecting the cost. That's what it means to me. Yeah, no, so, most definitely. I agree with you. Good. I want you to agree with me. <laughs> yeah. See, that's why I like chatting with you. We have different viewpoints sometimes, but... I think we all generally want the best for for Lucid, um, but Saudi Bay, I appreciate you jumping on. It's always a pleasure. If you have time, you're always welcome to join live streaming for Lucid earnings. If that's a uh, is suitable for your time, um, if you wanted, but yeah, thanks for hopping on. Thank you for having me. See you soon. <laughs>